I didn't think I'd say this again for a while, but welcome back to the Cam Mac Adventures. I'm Cam Mac, and I'm coming to you from our new home in Seattle, Washington. I could not be more excited than to start posting videos for you again immediately now that we're all settled. But I want to make sure that you know, during this quarantine time, it's going to be a little bit different. I did have to get a little bit crafty with the way the videos are going to come out, but I really think you'll like what you'll see. So last night, I came out with this bartending lesson where I went on Facebook and Instagram Live teaching people how to make a mojito and a Mary Pickford, which is a classic cocktail. So by trade, I'm a bartender. It's my career. It's what I do. And I am so sad right now that I can't go out and bartend at restaurants and bars safely. Uh, and so I wasn't going to let that stop me. I shared it with people. I put up my links, which you'll see in a minute, for all the tips if you wanted to send them. And additionally, I came up with the cool idea that I was going to help out people in need. So I actually donated $65 of the proceeds last night, which is 50% to the USBG or United States Bartenders Guild. And so that will go out to help struggling servers and bartenders that are furloughed, out of jobs, are not able to work at this time. So I think you'll like what you see coming up, but I am very excited to share it with you. So stay tuned, follow along if you have the supplies, and I can't wait to see you on many more Cam Mac adventures. Excellent, excellent. Got some people giving me confirmation that we can hear me and stuff, that's great. If you get a chance, please make sure that you share this post uh, because I'm gonna be doing a cocktail lesson as well as benefiting a lot of local benefits as well as national ones. For those of you just joining us, essentially, I'm Cam. If you don't know me personally, I'm a bartender by trade and it is what my passion is. I love doing it. I love seeing people, which right now is really unfortunate because I don't get to see a whole lot of you, uh, as well as some of my regular guests, which will be tuning in. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some bartending. I'm going to do a little cocktail lesson. So feel free to follow along. Also feel free to write this down. That way you can learn and do it for your next uh, little get together or maybe while you're at home during quarantine time. So what I'm going to be doing is teaching you how to make a couple rum drinks today. So it starts with just your basic rum. It's going to be a white rum. I actually ended up with one from Texas called George Ocean. I'm going to show it to Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And we're going to be making a couple cocktails. One of them is going to be very basic. The other are going to be a little bit more advanced. I am going to start out by giving you just a few instructions. So if you are following along at this point, please make sure you listen carefully. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. So I will be able to answer them as I see them. I hope to make this very entertaining for future uh, events. But uh, we are going to start out with a half cup of water. So fresh water, uh, make sure it's just still water and a half cup of water is going to go in here into this Pyrex. We're going to throw this in the microwave for about three and a half minutes. So I'm going to go do that now. Make sure you get your water, put it in either a micro microwave safe bowl or a Pyrex and we're going to be throwing this in. So while that is running for three and a half minutes, I'm going to make sure I have my sugar ready. So make sure you have crystallized white sugar or demerara, whatever you prefer. And we're gonna do a cup of that. So make sure you have a cup of sugar. It's gonna be a nice even cup, so make sure it's nice and leveled. And if you are gonna use smaller proportions, that's fine. Just make sure it's a two to one ratio. The secret to this simple syrup we're gonna be making is a two to one ratio. So make sure that's nice and smoothed out there. You have a nice even one cup of sugar. And while we wait on that, we're also gonna work on the next ingredient we have here. The next ingredient is going to be our lime juice. So grab your lime, make sure you cut it right down the middle lengthwise in half. And I am gonna show you a little trick that I do when I make my mojitos, because that's what we're working on right now. Uh, I also take one of the halves and cut just a slice off and save that for later. It's important you save that for later. So take a slice off of that lime. You end up with this nice wheel, very, very nice. And that is gonna go off to the side just for a little bit later. You take your two halves of lime and you go ahead and squeeze them. Now, if you don't have a big fancy squeezer like this one, you're more than welcome to squeeze them by hand. It does take a little bit more force. Go ahead and squeeze that on in a cup. Same thing with the other half, and I'm gonna show you just for those that don't have a squeezer, just take it face down, give it a squeeze one way, turn it 90 degrees, give it another squeeze, and kind of tilt it side to side like that, just so you get all that nice juice out. Excellent. So, we're about ready with that simple syrup now. Mm. 
All right. So we've got some hot water, very steamy, so be careful. Gonna take that full cup of sugar, toss it on in there. Now take a spoon, it doesn't have to be a big fancy one like this one. I actually use spoons like this for the trade that I do, I bartend, so make sure that you use a spoon and just stir it. Just keep stirring it. It's gonna start out white and cloudy. So as you see on Facebook, you can see it better on Instagram right now, but on Facebook, you have this nice white cloudy substance. Two to one ratio of sugar and water. So again, half a cup of water, heat it up for about three and a half minutes. Full cup of sugar. I'm gonna stir for just a little while. Once it gets a little less grainy and a little bit clearer, we're gonna be able to use it in our cocktail. Now, the good news is that if you made a little bit too much this time, you can actually save it. It really doesn't go bad for a while, so you're more than welcome to use it by putting it in a bottle like this. So after a while, it will cool down. You can put it in your fridge after it's cooled down with a lid, and it will eventually get nice and clear like so. So, we have the substance clearing up just a little bit. That's our simple syrup, and we're gonna be using that in the cocktail, but, Let's get started with how we mix it. So take your mixing tin. It doesn't actually have to be a two-piece mixer set like this. I prefer this when I work. It helps me work faster. It helps me work a little more accurately. And of course, this is my preference on what I use. But you always wanna start mixing your drink with the least expensive ingredient. That way, if you put too much of something, let's say you put too much liquor in it, and you don't like it, you're gonna end up wasting all that liquor. So the more important thing to start with is gonna be something less expensive. You can always make more simple syrup, you can always squeeze more limes, but you're gonna to wanna to start with those because those will, of course, you know, not potentially uh, cost you a whole lot to remake. So we are going to start with an ounce of lime juice. So grab up your little jigger, your little bucket jigger, whatever you prefer. Put about an ounce of lime juice in there just like this. Yeah. Now we're gonna use 0.75 ounces, so three quarters of an ounce of the simple syrup we just made. And that's gonna go in there as well. And if you remember your homework I texted you, if you remember it on the posts, mint was very important, and I'm gonna teach you a very valuable lesson about mint. So. A lot of people are under the impression that with the original mint recipe for the mojito, you needed to muddle the mint very coarsely. I have a muddler. Muddlers are easy to use. They're effortless. Anyone can use them. Basically, they're going to grind up the mint into a bunch of little pieces or at least break the veins. That's what it's meant for. But you'll notice that if you use a muddler for your mojito, it's gonna have a nice tannic sour flavor that some people prefer, but I don't. It's not what a lot of my guests at the bar I usually like, but basically you're gonna take this mint and open up the veins in a way that you may have not known before. So instead of crushing it, instead of putting it in the glass and just mixing it around with a spoon or something, you're gonna take it, lay it flat on your hand like so, and give it a clap. Smack the mint, smack it real hard. Gonna give it a nice smack. The dogs will bark and the mint veins will all have opened at that point. So take, I'd say anywhere between six and 10 leaves. You'll have a whole bunch just to throw in there. So now it's nice and broken, throw it on in there. Now we're gonna go to the more expensive ingredients. White rum. Take your white rum, open it on up, and two ounces of rum. A lot of recipes call for an ounce and a half. I like mine a little bit stronger. So throw that in, in there. Now you got your rum, you got your lime juice, you have your mint, and you have your simple syrup in the tin. All you need now is some ice. So go grab that ice in the other side of your shaker or in another cup. Whatever you want, that's fine. Just make sure you grab enough ice. But you want a good amount this time. So grab, if you have something like this, I'd say a full cup of ice is much needed in this recipe. So, a full cup of ice. Basically, I'm gonna turn this into the shaker. Now, this part's really important because you can end up covering yourself in a lot of this unless you have that nice tight seal around the shaker. So give it a couple taps, make sure it's nice and secure. Should be able to turn it upside down without anything falling out. 
If you have one of those Boston shakers with the little cap on top, do that same thing, but not too hard because that can get really, really difficult to remove. So what we're going to do is we're going to give that a tap. We're going to give it a shake. Now, my technique for shaking has taken a few years to master. Uh, I have a couple people that I've seen that just can't shake for the life of them. But listen, it takes practice. So no one's watching you. You're quarantined at home right now. Just give it a try. Came a little bit loose, I almost lost it. <laughs> now, most drinks, if they have citrus, require you to strain and even double strain your drinks just to get those unwanted particles out of the beverage. In this case, what I'm going to tell you to do is what's called a dirty pour. A dirty pour requires you to take your glass, take your mixed everything, including the ice you shook it with, and turn it on in there like so, just like that. Now, I'm gonna go over something real quick because I think it's very important to note at this point, but if you were gonna make a mojito, traditionally what you'll top that remaining space off with is club soda. Personally, I like it a little bit more on the sweet side and I also use a little bit less simple syrup than traditional recipes call for, just because I like to add a little bit of Sprite. So, what you're gonna do is take that, Top it on off. And you remember that lime wheel I told you about earlier? Take that thing, stick it on in there like that, right? Then you'll take a little bit of mint if you have any left, pinch a little bit off like so. Give it a little smack on your hand just for fragrance. Rub it all over the glass there. And that makes it so that mint aroma travels with you on your hands for the next drink. It really help, helps open up your palate for that next beverage as well. Stick it right behind that line. Then you'll have a beautiful shaken fresh made mojito. I'm going to give this off to my wife. Thank you. And see what she thinks. Let's hear it. I'm a straw. <laughs> She's grabbing a straw. Oh, she doesn't like it. Kidding. What? It's really good. Is it? Yeah, it's delicious. Try some. Pretty solid. I could drink these poolside all summer if I'm allowed to go outside. 50% of your tips will go to the USBG Guy Fieri's Fund or Heaven Hills Distillery. So make sure to contribute if you can. And if you can't, that's fine. Just make sure you share these posts because I'm going to be doing this twice a week, making sure that I help out as many people as possible. So start with your tin. This drink is going to be called a Mary Pickford. It is from the very early 1900s and it was created basically to make the flavors of the spirits back then taste a little bit better. But we're gonna start with the cheap, cheap ingredients first. Make sure you start with your pineapple juice. An ounce and a half of pineapple juice in your cocktail. So an ounce, a half, ounce and a half of pineapple, send it on in there. Yeah, very nice everybody. Then, you're going to go for the grenadine. You can also make this yourself. There's plenty of recipes online to do it, but given the fact that everyone may be uh, quarantined right now, or should be rather, I'm going to use just the store-bought stuff. So you're going to go for a quarter ounce of that. Go for a quarter ounce of that grenadine. Throw it on in there, nice and red and shiny. And next, an unusual liqueur, one of my favorites. It can be enjoyed as an aperitif. It can also be enjoyed in cocktails like this one. This is Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Gonna give you both an individual look on Facebook and on Instagram. Ooh, that light's bright. Luxardo Maraschino liqueur comes from Italy. It is actually a liqueur made of the pits, the stems, and some of the skins of cherries. So it's not gonna have a cherry flavor like the grenadine would, but it does have that bitter sort of nutty almond flavor. We're going to go for a quarter ounce of that. Throw that on in there. Very nice. And as I said, most expensive ingredient lasts just to make sure you don't waste it. We're going to go with an ounce and a half of white rum. Now, before we add ice and shake again, this is going to give you a little more practice to shake. Oh my goodness, buzz cow, mezcal, the hearts, the eyes, I 
I love you guys. Your mezcal is awesome. The Hoven is awesome. I love it. It's amazing. Thank you for creating that. Uh, additionally, before you start shaking, just going to let you know to make sure that you have a martini glass. If you don't have a martini glass, make sure that you have some sort of rocks glass without ice because this is supposed to be served up. But I like to start out by garnishing glass. So if you're bartenders like me, uh, you actually can save a lot of time in the beginning by setting out your glassware. If you need to be efficient, if you need to be quick, you're going to start out with the glassware ready. For me, I like to start with the glassware. And if you have cherries like I like to add to this cocktail, that's awesome. I like to throw a couple in there. All right. We bring you back from this fridge visit for the exciting conclusion. Make sure you tap that. Make sure that seal is nice and tight. You should be able to grab it by the top or flip it upside down without anything falling out. So again, give it a nice tap. Give it a nice shake. Remember, you're home. The lights are probably on, but no one's probably home besides yourself or your family. And no one's going to judge you except for your family, which judges you twice as hard as a normal human being. But it's fine. Start shaking. You'll know that it's ready because it's very, very cold. The traditional shake lasts 10 Mississippi, but I like to shake it really, really hard. Get all those ice chips in there before we strain them out so it's very cold. And I didn't mention this earlier, but if you do have one of these little basket strainers or a double strainer, I'll give you a minute to grab it. So take your time. Take your strainer, take your double strainer, pour it on in there. So you're probably wondering why the double strainer? Well, this is gonna strain out the big eyes. This is gonna strain out those unwanted particles. You can probably see them floating around in there. That's all that pineapple pulp. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mary Pickford. Personally, I will tell you that I like a little squeeze of citrus in there. And like I told you before, there was an ingredient I forgot. It was lemon juice. So if you have a lime, it will work just fine in this cocktail, but I might like it a little squeeze of fresh lemon or lime juice on the top because that tanginess really balances things out very well. I'm going to take a sip of this and hand it off to the missus. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you followed along, I hope it was easy. Please comment any questions you have. I'm happy to answer them because I will be answering back at all times. And make sure to give that video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss another upload. I have lots more great stuff coming to you, and I'm going to be posting these cocktail videos twice a week during this pandemic so I can help out as many people as possible. Once again, 50% of those proceeds will help everybody out, and I appreciate on behalf of myself as well as other service industry staff out there the support. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining.